2008, 2009 season, you ended up getting traded. But one of the things I wanted to ask you is like, you're still fa- obviously fairly young. You got a lot of hockey left. I mean, this may be a dumb question, but did you still, you winning that cup, does it make you hungrier to win it again? I think so. Just, I mean, I'm not a drug addict, but I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a high, right? You get a yeah, high. Yeah, of course. Like, Man, I just, I just want to do that again. Right. And that's, yeah. I guess probably the best way I, I can explain it. Like I, we got it. And I was like, well, man, that was so cool. I'd, I'd, I'd really love to do that again. If we could, if we could get the opportunity. So, um, you know, fortunately for me, you know, it was good towards the end of my career. I didn't have to like chase cups. Right. Um, right. Which was easier kind of when I was able to hang it up, but I'm sure that's for later in the conversation, but uh, yeah, you win one and it's, it's always just like, get me there again, please. Just God. get me there. I like they were chasing you at one point. Yeah, I, I know. That's the truth. Uh, like I said, you're, you're traded to the Kings. And then, you know, looking back, and and I'm pretty big hockey nerd, so I kind of remember I, just, I watch hockey all the time. But yeah. just t- t- some of the guys in L.A., you go to another team with, with just some really special players. Not that other teams don't have those kind of guys, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm thinking of Andre Kobatar is one of my favorite players in the league. Yeah. Um, you had Jared Stoll, Greener, Matt Green. Like, I, you know, I had him a couple times with USA Hockey. What a fucking guy he is. Like, that, you know, like guys like that, D'Lo Brown, Dustin Brown, I loved him. And you end up with Richie Karts, uh, you know, back in LA and all that, but, uh, it drew Dowdy. Uh, but talk a little bit about your time there, like, and what that was like. Yeah, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, we, it's, it's really hard to find a tough thing to say about playing hockey in Los Angeles. I mean, I guess you're, you're under the radar a little bit. Um, but when we were there, like the Lakers stunk, the Clippers weren't any good. He's like, we were the show in town. Like, we, we were the show and, and we were the team that was winning. We were the team that uh, people were talking about, that we were getting more headlines than everybody else. Like it was, it was great. And then when you did have a bad day, you said, you know what? I'm just going to go out on the beach. Life ain't so bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> when when, when Daryl Sutter is just riding you and you just, you just, <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you just want to get out of there and then you go to the beach and you look and you're like, All right, life ain't so bad. It's okay. Let's get, yeah. let's get ourselves. Let's reset here and let's come back tomorrow and be good. So, um, it was great. It was, it was, a, it was an awesome time. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, our general manager there, Dean Lombardi, um, he's been writing a book for years right now and I, I can't wait, uh, for it to be finished. He's, you know, talking to a lot of guys and stuff. So, um, you know, Dean's in the, in the, in the Flyers organization right now. Yeah. And uh, such a such a great guy, such a smart guy. Love talking to him. So I'm looking forward to that book when it comes out. Yeah, that that'll definitely yeah, be, be a good I one. Realize, I didn't realize he was writing one. That's 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 awesome. That will be good. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, you you brought up uh, Daryl uh, <laughs> Daryl Sutter and and anytime we we have guys on like Craig Berube played for him. You know Johnny Stevens worked with him obviously uh, there in L.A. And <laughs> oh, I has said, Johnny been on? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so Johnny. Johnny, I said, come on, Johnny. Like, you know, he's Mr. Serious. Like, yeah. we, we, we broke him down, but he told us a couple. Uh, I've heard stories from Richie, from Carter, from from Chief. Just great story. Boosh played played for Daryl. and yeah. uh, But I was going to – he told us a story about one night. Uh, <laughs> Green, Matt Green's having a tough time handling the puck there. <laughs> you know, he's chopping it up a bit. And he, Johnny says, Greener comes off the ice, and next thing you know, this stick comes flying by. Almost hits Johnny and hits the glass, lands, and Johnny turns around, and I, I guess it was a left-handed stick. And, and, and Daryl said, Greener, try that one because yeah. he's right-handed team <laughs> <laughs> try that one yeah. Oh, yeah yeah he would yeah he would there were i mean there's just literally there's so many stories you can tell i mean there was there was one where where drew dowdy was getting up in the play so much that that you know he was he was like the fourth forward he kind of is anyway right but you know daryl's you know good on structure and you know <laughs> so Drew just came off the play. He was just on another rush up the ice and he comes back the ice and, and he sits down and Daryl looks at him and goes, what are you doing? And Drew's like, what? He's like, well, get back out there. He's like, well, there's two D out there. He's like, no, no, right wing. <laughs> and Drew's like, what? 
He's like, so he went out there right wing. And then when he tried to come off, he's like, no, you stay out there. You want to play forward? You just play forward all game. And it's, it's, you know, we're sitting there, we're giggling in our, you know, yeah, like, what course, is going yeah. on here? Uh, but it, it was, it was funny. There's, there's just a ton of stories like that. He just kept you on your toes. That's for sure. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, you always got to be ready. And I, I, you know, the mad scientists of coaching, like they know what they're doing and they have yeah. a plan and, uh, there's different messages, but, uh, you know, you catch him away from the rink and he's just, you know, super nice, fun, super guy. But when it's game day, it's game day. Like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. It's game on. Yeah. That sarcasm's classic. Hey, eh? just, yeah. yeah, you just gotta be ready for it. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chief, oh, chief, lo chief loves telling uh, stories about Daryl, and they're they're all good, like you said. Uh, see, I think I think Johnny told us also one night one of the goalies had a tough game, and and Daryl's supposed to go to do the you know his interviews, and he sent the goalie coach. <laughs> said, "You go fucking do yeah. it. <laughs> this yeah. is on you tonight, or something yeah. like that." You know. Um, but uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of goalies, um, when you guys won, uh, Jonathan Quick. Like, yeah, it, it, that for that one year. Well, I mean, both years he, he was great, but it was it was one of the most unbelievable goalie like performances that I can remember seeing. I mean, I know there's been a ton of, of very good goalie, uh, you know, especially you got to have a hot goalie to win the cup. Everybody knows that. But he was just ridiculous. He it was the single most impressive stretch of hockey that I, I I've, I've ever witnessed from a goalie and, and, you know, the purists and the older guys are going to be like, what about this? What about that? I'm like, I don't know anything about that, but all I know is Jonathan quick in 2012 was amazing. Like absolutely amazing. There'd be times when you'd start a game and you could tell, you could tell when a goalies are, are in the zone, right? You, you yeah. can, everybody can kind of tell. And when you see him in that zone, you're like, oh boy, I don't think one's getting by. Yeah. Him tonight. Yeah. We might just have to get one tonight, boys. Just yeah. one, you know? It's a good and, feeling uh, to have, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was unanimous, but uh, I mean, <laughs> it sure should have been that he won that consummate that year because he was he was phenomenal. Yeah, he was amazing. I, and, uh, I, an old teammate uh, was there with you too. I for just, just thought about that, Riles. Like, Simone Gagne, who you started right. with in, yeah. in Philly, ended up, I, for, I forget about Gags winning that cup there. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, th those teams were fun to watch. And it was kind of, you guys were kind of sandwiched in with the Blackhawks and and both teams. Like, I, I just couldn't wait to watch those games because they were, they were so excited. Both both you guys were, were so good at that time in those years. Yeah, they were. I mean, there was there was a stretch there for six six years or so that, you know, it was... Chicago or LA coming out of the Western conference. Yeah, and, for and, sure. You know, I know they won theirs in I think 2011, 2013. It, well, they beat us 15? 2010. 10, 10. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they won three. I know that. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. They <laughs> yeah. won three. And yeah. yeah. So they won three, but they were a phenomenal team. Absolutely. And, and to this day, um, Chicago is one of the best arenas yeah. to play in. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. It's in my top three for sure, along with um, other than the home teams I played with. I'm not going to leave them out, but I love going yeah. on the road and playing in Montreal, Chicago, and New York City. I love oh, those three New arenas. Yep. They're, they're the best. They're the greatest atmospheres, and and the the anthem in Chicago will will forever be etched in my brain as as one of my best memories.